Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this Friday, last day of the week. We're looking at this uh, market as having a tremendous turnaround yesterday. This is these are one of the turnarounds that we look for uh, very often. What we want to do is to see. Let me show you the chart here uh, on this uh, Friday, the 25th of February. Look, when you're looking at the uh, VIX index, what you want to see is a coincidence pullback as highs are made in the volatility index and then a sudden turnaround where you get a v-shaped pattern reversal in the indices as the vix index comes down preferably um, under the previous high which was 3894 back i think it was about the 24th of january with the covid inflation russia uh, scare and then all of a sudden we've got again russia uh, 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 Ukraine and rates, and we pull back sharply. And you want to see that together with gold. Gold pull back. You want to see it together with uh, crude oil. Mm -mm, not so fast. Crude oil did pull back from 100.54. It's at 92.02. That's a huge percentage move. But at the same time, still holding up well. All right, let's get the numbers. And I believe we've got, we might have a call. So I want to get this done. The, uh, the Dow uh, went to 32,272 yesterday morning. And then read it sharply higher. This is what I call, oh, I didn't type it in this particular, it's called the Chapman Wave. It's a green Chapman Wave Roman candle. That's exactly the opposite of, let me just show you, because you want to look at the candles. If you're looking at the SPX, the S&P monthly chart, this is what I've been warning about. See right here, it's where the it opens at highs. It has a fractional move to the upside, in this case 48, 18.62, plunges to the downside, in this case all the way down to the um, to the 14 period moving out, and then closes halfway to two thirds above the low. That's really important. That's the characteristic. Rule of thumb, if you go halfway into that in a shorter time period of the bottom wick, you've got to be careful because there's a good chance you're not only going to test the low, you're going to break the low. That's exactly what we've done, but that's a monthly chart. I'm looking now at the reversal on the daily chart to say, hey, that was a really good turnaround. Now we want to start a, a gray, a single leg A to the upside. We've started gray A. It's not blue, meaning you should go even higher. This is an A. It's just a starter position. On balance volume turnaround, everything turned around, but the technicals are still very negative. So we are up now 21 points. Earlier on, we went all the way to 43.19, pull back. I would have preferred a much deeper correction early on and then a rally into the close. And it may be selling just before the close because of the weekend nervousness. Let's go to the S&P. We've got the S&P now up 19 at 43.08. It also went much higher. It went to, oh, no, 43.19. Yeah, it went to 43.19.48. Yeah, it it's pulling back, but this is also a great a great A. And what we're looking at here is the, the weekly chart is going to be important, but it's that monthly. I would love to see, I would love to see that at Tuesday's close, we have popped all the way back to about 43.40, somewhere up there, because that'll change that candle tremendously as the first candle after the Roman candle, uh, red candle. Now we go to the QQQ. I do, I have a, uh, let me just see. I don't know if I have a caller, but I have a question. Uh, no one answering the phone. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry about that. Z in the den wants to know. He's got a question. He did try to call in. Uh, uh, no one answering the phone. Here's my NDX question. Has the NDX bottomed for several weeks minimum as you see it? What needs to happen for that to be a bottom? Uh, oh, he's on the phone. Uh, uh, John, are you there? Basil, thanks for taking the uh the call, and uh, you've just read my question that I posted in the Tiger's Den. So thanks, uh, thanks in advance for sharing your thoughts on that question. My pleasure. So let, let's do a couple of things. Now, there are, there are a number of factors that we're looking at. Let's just look at the charts as they stand right now. In the weekly chart, 
on that third bar after the high at 368.48, which was the high of the uh, 22nd of, uh, that was November, where the day made a head and shoulders top. I don't like that pattern. You've got to use other techniques for it to succeed. But this thing, in this case, it did. It hit the um, inside track re repellent zone, plummeted, couldn't hold the 200 period and the, two, the uh, inside track propellant zone. That's become resistance. That is the orange line right in the middle of the day. That's 381.55. So let's just treat that as a, just an outside chance at this point because you, you've got to get a lot more going before you can talk about going from 340 to 361. That's number one. Number two, that's the daily. Now let's go back to the monthly. The monthly not only um, broke, it's, it's not really a perfect Chapman Wave Roman candle. It has the characteristics. It just it closed that month a little too low. If it closed a little higher, that would have been perfect. But it has the characteristics because it went halfway on a shorter term to the lower wick, and it broke, it broke the 14-period moving average. And even now as we speak, that is at 346, 348 in the monthly chart, and we're at 339. So that says, in the bigger picture, to be able to repair the damage in the Invesco QQQ Trust series, and I'm, just because I know you like to look at the cash indexes, I'm going to go to the index 100, has this exactly the same chart formation. In this particular case, a G slash C in the monthly chart at the top is not yet a G, it's not yet a C. I've got an alternate count. That's number one. Number two is um, within the context of what we're looking at, look how high the nine period moving average is above the 14 period moving average. To me, that is really, really important because it says for that monthly chart to go negative, just to get a sell signal, I would need to see the um, monthly close, that would be the month of March, close quite a bit under least, at least 13,500. And if it does that, and if it goes under the low that was made, if it goes under 13,000 in the monthly chart, even if it doesn't close it, if it goes under it, that nine period moving average will start to move down. But to get that nine period to cross negative, to say I'm, the monthly is in a sell mode, I, I'm thinking 11,800 or 12,100. And this is just every week, a drip, drip, drip. But if it's on a sudden smash, 11,800 is imperative to hold. It breaks that. That is very serious. So I'm saying in the... I haven't yet got it. We wait for Monday to the end of the day. On Monday, that'll be the end of the month. I can talk about the monthly chart. I can't talk about it until it's closed. Other than to say, as of right now, it's a negative candle. It's a neg Everything about it is a negative posture. And yet the stochastic still holding at 80%. I love it over 80%. And the 9 is way over the 14. And the MACD is only just turned down. So the monthly chart is rolling over, but there's still internal strength. Now, the weekly chart is very different. The weekly chart has got this dreaded H pattern, two dreaded H patterns. Let me just show for those folks just listening for the first time. Uh, that is this pattern right here. Just showed briefly. What happens is the price comes down sharply. It tries to bounce, and then it fails, and it arches over, and it takes out the left side low, which means it can go quite a bit lower. Now, the weekly chart has decidedly broken under it but ironically enough, I'm going to talk about this because it's so important to the dreaded H pattern. We are above the left side low in both the daily and the weekly, above 13,724. If you can hold on or I will just continue, uh, we'll see. Thank you, Basil. Okay. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back now. I'm not sure uh, John likes to go back to the den. John, I don't know if you're still there, but you've got your question in. Uh, John, you there? No, I, John went, okay. So John is listening in the den. So let's go through a bunch of things that are really important at this particular time. Within the context of the dreaded H formation, and that's that pattern that goes to the left side, I make it red because if it fails at the second, uh, first or second peak, that's usually a, a pretty decent decline. And if it takes out the left side low, the rule of thumb in the Chapman wave methodology is you have two, you have two, maybe three sessions to close above the left side low, in this case, 334.15. If it can do that, and actually it did it the very next session, that was yesterday, if it closes above that today, that is in essence saying, all right, that's one step in a reversal process, but having broken that left side low, you've got to trigger a brand new buy signal that goes to a buy mode in the daily to say that you're going to help the longer term, meaning the, the weekly and the monthly charts. So let's just get that out the way. Most importantly is that this second day after a potential, I call it a low, not the low, what happens here is it's really important that within, look, you remember on the 24th, we had the Chapman Wave Roman candle right there. You stalled for, for one, one session, but the next session you went to a higher high. Then you stalled again. You remember that was, what was that? There were a whole bunch of conflicts going on. Uh, oh, the Fed, there was, you know, I can't remember exactly, but there was something that stalled the market for a couple of days, and then it broke to the upside, and then it ran to that leg B at 370.10. The MACD was okay. The stochastic was still very low. The on balance volume made a little V-shaped turnaround. But then what happened is that 200 period, that orange 200 period became such a powerful um, a repellent zone that it reversed, plus I had the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone right there. That's a technique that I use where there's a, a, for, a, a trend line down. I drew two, uh, I'll do it now just for sure. Um, I didn't do it there because it was getting a little bit messy. I don't like messy charts. And that's it. This whole area became the repellent zone. And even now, I don't even need to use it now because I've got the 14 period moving average of 343.10 and the so that's the nine. The 14 is way above 346.51 as uh, um, icons to watch, just visuals to watch. So that just says we are early in this process. As I said, I would have preferred if the market pulled back 
very sharply this morning to say, oh, my God, that wasn't a turnaround. And then slowly over the day had a really strong rally, took out yesterday's high, looked like it was on a close above, but then closed with like a plus, a, a, a small gain in the Dow, maybe a small loss. And then because of whatever happens over the weekend, Monday, especially with that monthly chart that I'm looking at in the s and I'm talking about the Qs right now, the index 100, that is a strong, powerful close going into Tuesday, the 1st of March. That's kind of the scenario that I would like to look at. So it's just a scenario. And now let's go through uh, what we're looking at in terms of the question. It's a really great question. And in other words, for John, the question is, is it a low in the daily or the low? And all I can say, I think right now, it's just a low. It's one of the many things we look at. And we'll have to see if this is a market where the rule of thumb is, uh, uh, what is it? Something like sell on the bad news, buy, no, no, no. Sell on the rumor, buy the news. Um, no. Yeah, something like that, whatever it is, it's the opposite. So when, when, the, when, the, when the guns are, are firing off, yeah, like uh, with uh, the 16th of, I think it was January of, was it 1990, 1991, uh, with the um, um, Iraq war, that, that, that was where the market just shot up and it held. This is different. We're in a different phase. We're different. A whole bunch of things are going on right now that says this is just a low. And one of the things that we can do, we can look at certain uh, sectors. For instance, look, Square, this is Block. Uh, had a fabulous earnings. I I've I followed this for a long time, and it made a high of 289.20. I don't know why these companies are changing their names. What's wrong with Square? What was wrong with Facebook? Don't uh, Google. I mean, change your name to something like that rings and has. A, when you make your 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 name on something that is, the moniker becomes you. Why do you change it? Why are you embarrassed? Anyway. So up 17 and 112.51 had a high of 119. This is the start of something. Now, I need to talk about two things. I'm going to go um, back to the queues just for a moment because I needed to do something else that I meant to do yesterday. I forgot. Um, we're snowing here in Boston. It's Friday. I mentioned, I think it was back in October or November when we had our first snowstorm. I said, wow, we snow it's snowing. I think it was a Friday or something like that. I said, Watch this. My rule of thumb is, and it's only a rule of thumb, remember, um, that in, at least in the Boston area, to my memory, when it starts off on a particular day, if you get one repeat of that day, that's it for the, for the, for the season. And we've seen how many weekends now in the Boston area, that's our snow weekend. So I, I like to look at the rhythm of these diff different things. So let's look at the rhythm of the single leg to the A side, to the leg A, going to a peak A in the QQQs, the week of the 4th of February. It took one week to go up, and it took four weeks, that include this week, to come down and break it. So it's said that the in a bear market, you get these sudden moves to the upside, and then they fizzle. And that was bear market material. And at this particular point, the weekly chart, look, the nine is way under the 14. It's going to take a lot to get that back again. It's going to actually take a move into the 373 area or higher. The MACD is very, very weak. The histogram hasn't even started improving. The, uh, the stochastic is at 20%. I suspect when this is all over, the weekly stochastic will be in the single digits, maybe the teens, but I think maybe even the single digits. So there's a lot of room on the downside um, as we go maybe sideways now for a little while and then do a retest of the lows as the deterioration starts to um, increase and the um, negativity starts to increase. But we'll, we'll start to see the histogram and the MACD start to improve so that one of the key technicals is starting to improve as all the bearishness comes in. So we've got your internal low and then you've got your residual low. Think of it as a, um, think of it as, uh, let's call it an earthquake and then the aftershock. That can, earthquake can either be at one level and then the aftershock could be greater, the same or much less. 
and that's the same with the uh, the internal low. When that occurs, that could even be a little higher. But at this particular point, the 318.26 level, at this moment, I'm calling it a low. The only way I'll be able to upgrade that is if there's a takeout in the month of March, any time that it could be the last day. The month of March, there's a takeout on a closing basis of the high of 370.10 that was made on the 2nd of February. A close above that level will tell me that that bank team, the weekly chart is really improving. So I'm putting it a process right now. So I hope that helps you. In other words, the answer is, I should have just said right away, no, this is not the low in the QQQs, but it could be a low and a tradable low. And I'm not, at this point, I'm not going to get more than about two weeks at this particular stage to do a retest. And I'll talk about it more next week. I'll be back in a month. Dows of 356. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So I need to just go through a couple of things. This applies to almost all the indices, but the one that I'm looking at right now in terms of uh, a question came in. This is IWM, the Russell 2000, and the question was, Look how it held the left side low in the dreaded H pattern. It was a much better uh, formation than most of the other indices. W what about it? And my answer is the same as I said earlier in the week. The IWM weekly chart and the IWM, the Russell 2000 monthly charts, have got patterns that are saying to me, a lot more work needs to be done for us to be able to identify the small caps as leading in this particular uh, phase 
That's number one. And number two is within the context of everything we're looking at, uh, is this a trade? And would the IWM be better than the IWN or vice versa, which is the value? And the IWN, N for Nancy, 150.90 was the left side low on the 24th. And yesterday it was 149.00, a round number low. I didn't see that. And I think at this particular choice, uh, a moment, if you're choosing between the two, I'd say that there's probably a greater chance that holding weakness to come, if there's more weakness to come in the lowercase h that could go to a lowercase m with huge resistance in the 159 area with the 200 period moving average, my preference would be looking at the n rather than the uh, IWM. That is the same thing, but it's just choosing the value stocks within the Russell 2000. I hope that answers the question there. Now, a couple of other questions. Let me just show you. So yesterday I meant to mention, I think I forgot, I might have mentioned it. Uh, Tommy Jr., a fabulous show starts at 9 a.m. in the morning. I'm sure some of you, um, you know, who are listening to TF, TFN all the time are listening to, to Tommy as well. Um, but great show. This morning he was putting a whole bunch of uh, the fundamentals together in a really good way uh, with Russia and just what is going on talking about oil, etc. Uh, I have my own, I'll get to oil in a moment. I'm going to talk about that. But what I wanted to say is that uh, round number, look at this, Tesla made a round number 700.00 yesterday after plummeting from the 1243 high of November, uh, which also had an open uh, round number at the open at 1145. Couldn't have been. Yeah, 11.45 went to 12.43.49. That's on the weekly basis. And then plunged to a leg D in the weekly chart. So this is going to take a lot more. So I suspect that Tesla, that's a really good bounce. I can only, this one, I'm treating only as a bounce because of the way, the manner in which it's making these lower lows and lower highs. I think it needs more time. It's going to be one of those that fits into the, like the NDX 100. A category, those in spectacular stocks, I don't know, I haven't even looked at it for a while, like a DocuSign, which had a really good candle yesterday and struggling today, went to a leg E. Oh, and the question was, I'm sorry, I haven't finished the QQQ. What is the notation? I'm calling it an F, but I have to say that's from the P, the, the trough E on the 24th. Then it went to a B minus at 370.10, folded, and this low, I have to count the inside as well. So this is a trough A on the 4th of, of February. This is a trough B on the 14th. And now we have a coincident pullback that says that E is extended to an F, but maybe it's an F slash C. I, I, my, th my guess right now for the moment, I think F is going to turn into an F. I think that the sunning has been so intense in this category that even relief bounces could start to create higher a higher base as it rallies to the upside. The way the Q, unless I never mentioned, I'll do it again because actually I now have a, a few people asking about the Qs. If what what's the level that it, you're watching? Three three four fifteen was the low of the twenty fourth. If it closes under three 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 point zero zero at any stage in the next week, that is actually very negative action. It says. Yeah, it might be a low, but a lousy low, and we're going to have to do a lot more testing. So make it as simple as that, just you've got your levels to watch. Now, I haven't finished, so I want you to say the SMHs, you know, SMHs are not really participating, down 44 cents at 266.50. That's what makes me concerned in saying this is only a bounce, and yes, we want to play the bounce for subscribers. We try to play the bounce, but at the same time, I'm looking at, look, my wife and I tried to get a booking the other day. In the timeshare, we have a couple of weeks we have that we haven't used and we've got them as we can just go anywhere. So we were on the phone. One place said, this is under the, under the, um, under the timeshare agreement. We tried to get in New York a couple of hotels, motels, resorts, whatever it is you want to call them, it doesn't matter. One said nothing free until we've got maybe one or two weeks free in December. It just went on and on and on like that. Oh, maybe in the next couple of weeks we might have something just for maybe a few days or a week. Nothing. 
is available. And I'm, I'm checking around, and I'm telling you, people, uh, this last weekend, we did some just going around to different places, went to Newport, Rhode Island, um, where we actually have a timeshare, and uh, just to go and visit for the day. And it was a very kind of, it was cold. It was a nice day, but it was kind of coldish. It was, it was a holiday, Monday. And there were so many people. People are dying to get out. And now it used to be literally, if you went out, you really were dying to get out because we had COVID as a, a virulent uh, disease. Now, what we're looking at now is we've got something different. We have the going back to normal trade, if there's such a thing. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I'm watching Marriott closely. So Marriott had a big spike to an all-time high. I forgot to put the price in at 184.99 with a round number low on the uh, 16th of February. That says at any point, if it's able to close above 178, that is really good action. It's at 168 right now. It's trying to rally and it really hasn't succeeded very much. That's number one. So and that it's a peak E in the daily peak E maybe this week, but well, it will be a peak e in the in the weekly chart and a leg E in the monthly. If you go to Hyatt, Hyatt made 108.10 high in that same day, a peak E in the weekly, and a leg D at night. Uh, no, that's gone, that 99 round number is gone. So let's just get rid of that. So what we're looking at, and Hilton, so I'm watching this really closely to say, what exactly is going on? Uh, is there a return to normal trade? How's it going to work? How's it going to succeed? Well, I'm just telling you now that if you can start to see these hotels and resorts rally off the lows that were made and get back within 3%, 2% of their all-time highs, that would be one of the signs that I'm looking for. Number one, um, Disney. I haven't looked at Disney for a couple of days. It came, came off the low yesterday and now it's still weak today at 147. But I also keep saying it has it has entertainment theme parks, movies, but it also has uh, media. It's got a whole f in different infrastructure. But for me, that'll also be a clue because if me uh, if Disney at 147 for a whole week starts to trade above 157, I would say that's a good start for the comeback. Now here's another thing. So I'm talking about Tesla. Look at this. You've got um, you've got. Car Gurus, one that I follow very closely because I think a neighbor actually works for them. Um, I'm watching it come down sharply. It goes from the 36 level down to the 20, 29 level. Today it's up 10% at 42.62. Car Gurus Inc. online order sales, and I think that this week is one of the one of the companies say they're getting out of the business cycle. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So the other thing is, uh, oh, no, I just didn't finish that. I oh, got a whole bunch of things going on during the break. Yeah, so I don't know what that is. I, I believe, if I heard Tommy correctly, something about uh, there was another company that was in the in the uh, online uh, car sales business who maybe is getting out of it, whatever it is. This is just a sudden move up. And look, you've got, uh, I'd actually written all these down last night because I was going to look at them and thinking that, in fact, this is a better business than the auto company, than just being in the auto. Here, they, whatever car they've got, that's for sale. They don't have to uh, worry about supply anything at this particular point because there are second-hand cars. There are cars that are being uh, sold. So this is, look, here's AN. This is automation. A nice move up today. You're looking at, uh, what is this, uh, KAR? KAR. Big red candle, but it comes from a gap. It's trading the 13s yesterday, and it hits 22.10. It's up 5.15 at 18. So something's going on there. Uh, isn't that interesting? CVNA. C is Carvana? Yeah, Carvana, I guess it is. Oh, they are, they're up 7 at 133.72. So maybe they're the ones that are doing something. They're not up as big a percentage as the others. Anyway, it came off a low yesterday. But this is something that went from the 360, I think, area down to 107 yesterday. Ay, 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 Some of these hits have been amazing. Very, very bad. All right. So I've covered a bunch of things, but now I have to go to what I was wanting to talk about, and that's crude oil. Look, crude oil, the, at this particular point, we're looking at... Uh, now, I might be wrong, but I think that the Russian economy not only is very dependent on crude oil, but crude oil might be 30, 40, maybe even over 50% of their economy. And they don't have very much else. They have raw materials. Oh, 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 I didn't have it. Ukraine, Ukraine, if I can get, we'll have a break coming up. If I can get my little sheet that, that I had, unbelievable what the Ukraine has in terms of the raw materials. In fact, I need to read it. Uh, I'll do that as soon as I can find it. It's not right in front of me. So this is a really important moment because crude oil is generic to economies around the world, right? It's, uh, some, some, have, some have the crude oil, but mostly for the import-export, we actually export oil, not anywhere close to what we did, but Russia, I think we even take a certain percentage from Russia. So this is a tool. Once a in this case, uh, we call him a dictator. Once someone in a move like this has the power, so what do we do with crude oil? I'm not saying anything other than I'm watching crude oil closely because if crude oil starts, that will mean if crude oil starts to trade under 85, preferably under 83 in the next two weeks, that will say, ah, we've ameliorated ameliar the, the tension in that particular product that's necessary, at least for the moment. If it suddenly spirals above 102, that's just something else entirely. I don't think this market will like that at all. That's, that's, that's something I want to talk about. If you're looking at, just do this quickly, high-grade copper, holding quite nicely when you think about what's going on, high-grade copper 
at 4.50, uh, up 0.04. Hey, this is in, the, in a trading band. The rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. If you're looking at uh, the dollar, the dollar had a huge move up yesterday. It's given quite a chunk back. There's going to be a peak D. It went to that left side high that we were looking at. Uh, in the high 97s, and now it's going to digest these gains. And if you're looking at gold, gold is still very weak, down 35 at 1891. So I suspect what we're looking at here is that the market is saying that the that crude oil's pull back a little bit, not much, but a, a little bit. Gold. This is the icon of of fear that I use as as uh, just an emblem. Gold is a fear factor, geopolitical and economic. But if gold was to scream to the upside, that would say that the the fear factor around the world is so bad that the banks need to be worried. And look, the XLF, the financial S&P Select Financial Spot, is holding in the middle of the range. Isn't that nice? Look, it made a dreaded H pattern. 3682 was the low on the 24th. And yesterday's low was 3680. Two cents lower. This is the dreaded H. So far, we call it it was unsuccessful because it went under, but so far it's successful because it's immediately rallied back up and it even has a little island reversal. So that's saying that the TLT is correct in having a low at the lows right now at 137.16, up 39 cents, because it's saying that the TNX, TNX.X, the 10 year yield is up towards the highs. And that, all I'm saying right now is that the whole potpourri of what we're looking at is suggesting that on a short term basis, yes, we could be making some kind of a, a market low, but it's probably specific areas that are involved. And we want to watch the QQQ. One of the reasons why we got into a particular product this morning, I, I don't want to talk about it because I can't even check at this moment to say whether or not we were stopped out. I did have, a, I wanted it on a, on a pull. 95. Let me have just have a look. I'll tell you right now. Uh, yeah, I, I, I believe we are still in that. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, I believe we're still in it. And that was as a marker for us that if the QQQ, the index 100, as I was talking to John about it, if this is able to close today towards the high, Together with the S&P right here, look, the S&P, I want that candle, this monthly candle to improve tremendously by Monday. Monday's close, going, preferably having a new recovery high on Tuesday. I don't want it to plunge. I think we've made a, we've got those emotional indicators pulling back. That's the crude oil. That's a little bit, that's the gold. That's the VIX index. Those are the things we're looking at, and we've got that nice turnaround from the low yesterday. So let's put it together as a, a medium of identification, and that says that the, the um, and, and I'm going to focus a little bit more on the QQQ because that's the area that was hit the hardest, and that says this is the one that really needs to lead the pack, and it's not. It's up 0.81%. The Dow's up 1.36%. The S&P's up 1.22%. So it's lagging. I would like to see, rather than worry about the weekend, I would love to see a close at the highs with the QQQs up about 1.3%. And then I won't worry too much what the NDX, what the S&P and the Dow are doing. I want to see this index move much higher today. And so far, the entry that we got on one of our positions, uh, new positions, is saying, if this works, then you want to see follow through Sunday night without a terrible sell off in the futures because of what happens, whatever, you know, in terms of the Ukraine situation. You want to see going into Monday a really nice move up. Now, the only question I had here that I haven't dealt with on my list today, um, I did that, did that, and then I was sent something that I think I need to mention here. Um, so, uh, abrupt. This is the New York Times. Abrupt changes. Thank you, GT. Uh, this is abrupt changes. China caught in a bind over Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. You can understand that. Of course, they've got Taiwan. I'm not even going to go there right now. So we've got a break coming up. I hope I have a moment here. I can quickly grab uh, the pages that I have that were written up on what is in the Ukraine. You will not believe when I get back. Or maybe you know. That's a trap. That's quite offensive.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Just real quickly, a question came in about CLF, and that is uh, Cliff, uh, Cleveland Cliffs. It's acting well. It's finally above the 200 period moving average and steel stocks are moving. There's something going on here that's really important. I must tell you that the, over, the, the pessimism that, I, uh, that was generated over the weekend and what I'm really looking at, uh, I think we're going to make some kind of a recovery at some point and it's going to be quite sharp. And the other thing is PTRA. Yep, PTRA is looking very nice. Uh, it'll be uh, it's 877 over 915, that'll even be better. So let me just do this. Uh, what I'm doing that, I'll just put up the Dow chart right here. Oh, Dow's up 465. This is excellent action for the Dow. For those who ask, why does Ukraine matter? This is why Ukraine matters. I got this. I haven't really checked every, everything out, but really, even if you cut it in half, it's incredible. It is the second largest country by area in Europe by area. Uh, it has a population of 40 million. That's actually more than Poland. Ukrainian ranks first in Europe in proven recover, recoverable re reserves of uranium ores, second place in Europe and 10th place in the world in terms of titanium ore reserves, second place in the world in terms of explored reserves of manganese ores, largest, uh, second largest iron ore reserves, second place in Europe in terms of mercury, just goes on and on. Shale gas, uh, natural resources, fourth in the world, total value, 
Uh, seventh place in the world for coal reserves. Ukraine is an important agricultural country. Ah, oh, I never even went through the uh, the currents, the uh, grains today. First in Europe in terms of arable land. Third place in the world area of black soil. 25% of world volume. First place in the world exports of sunflower, sunflower oil, uh, barley production. It just goes on. Corn exporter, fourth largest uh, exporter of corn, largest producer of potatoes in the world. Uh, rye producer, bee production, wheat, I mean, just goes on. Ammonia, gas pipeline, uh, install capacity for nuclear plants, uh, largest manufacturer of rocket launches. I don't know how old this is, but anyway, isn't that interesting? Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Check out my perform my daily newsletter, and stay tuned to our latest event, a great programming coming for the rest of the day. See you on Monday. Have a wonderful